Your other choice when getting started with the Brits is this little thing, the Tetrarch. It shares a remarkable number of similarities to its larger 1.0 brother, the A13 Mark I. So go check out that video to glean a bit more info if you like. Otherwise, we're on to a low-tier rundown of the light tank Tetrarch Mark I. The first thing to notice about the Tetrarch is that it's quite small. No need to be self-conscious while driving it though. It can be a real terror on the battlefield, and we'll see how that small stature is really its greatest strength. Firstly, like the A13, the Tetrarch comes with the QF2 Pounder. An all-round good gun, fairly quick firing rate, fairly accurate, and good penetration. To get that penetration, you'll need to use the Mark 9B ammo for most of your work. It's a solid AP round, but it kicks up a lot of shrapnel, and is normally more than enough to peck the enemy to death in one or two shots. Also consider bringing a few of the Mark 1 APT shells. The explosive filler can be very helpful in taking out larger, thin-skinned vehicles like the LVTA, and the lower penetration is still enough to go through the side armor of most vehicles. The gun has excellent depression at negative 15 degrees, which is going to allow it to use plenty of hills and gullies for cover. It also has a very high gun elevation value at plus 25 degrees. This is normally enough to drive off approaching biplanes with the coaxial machine gun. Finally, it also has a low speed stabilizer. This will iron out any bumps the tank is experiencing, but just in the vertical plane and just when moving slowly. It's a nice feature to have when driving a tank like this, as you don't need to wait for the gun to settle after popping out from cover. The Tetrarch is, on paper, a very fast vehicle with a listed max speed of 67 km an hour, but it will reach that speed only in a straight line on pavement after 10 seconds or so. Cross country, its true operating speed is something closer to 45 km an hour, which is still quite good. Acceleration is not the best, so don't expect to be able to dart between cover in the blink of an eye. The main downside of a small vehicle is the number of crew and the layout of the fighting compartment. The Tetrarch manages three crew members, which is better than two, but they're basically sitting on top of each other. Getting hit in the fighting compartment is non-ideal. Moreover, it's an early British tank, so the armor isn't going to help you much either, with 16mm on the front of the hull and turret, most of it flat. The top armor is extra thin, with the top of the turret only being 4mm thick. This means it's vulnerable to losing its crew if hosed down by an aircraft from a high angle. The turret traverse speed is also awful, at just 4.9 degrees a second. To put that in perspective, it's the same speed as the Soviet KV-2 heavy tank, except the KV-2 has to traverse a bank vault with 4 people in it. This being the case, you can't take any engagements that require rapid target changes at slow speed. You'll lose every time. To offset this downside, the turning circle is quite small, so if you can keep your speed up, you can handbrake turn behind the enemy, giving you enough time to get the turret around. How best to drive the Tetrarch then? While there are some downsides to the small size of the vehicle, it's really mostly a strength. You can hide in every shell hole and use every tank wreck as a piece of cover to pop out from. Most bushes will hide the vehicle completely and it's very difficult to see from the air. This small size and the quick movement of the tank is key. You want to maneuver to a spot which gives you clear sight lines on the enemy, where any larger vehicle would be obvious to see. The spot has to have some hard cover that you can maneuver behind, and from there, pop out and hit the enemy at distance. If such a spot is not available or convenient, scurry along from cover to cover and wait in ambush. You should have an abundance of hiding spots. If you find yourself in the midst of a fight, disable the enemy's gun and wrap around them. If you can do this while staying close, they will likely have a tough time depressing their gun enough to hit you, especially if it's a tall vehicle. A word of warning though, you'll need to keep wrapping around them in the same direction, as if you begin going the opposite way, you'll never get the turret turned back around in time to finish them off. But now there's a player on the enemy team in a Tetrarch who's going to win them the game. What do you do? It's more than likely they've gotten themselves into some dominant spot and are dug in like a tick. If this is the case, you can't just charge in and try and run them out. They'll smash it guaranteed. You need to be a bit more sophisticated in your approach. Party their position to drive them out of cover or use smoke to obscure their line of sight if you have some available. If you fly aircraft, do you scum? The Tetrarch is quite vulnerable to small bombs or heavy machine gun fire, especially through the thin turret top. If none of these options are available, you need to try and wait them out and get the first shot off, which is a hard ask given how small the target will be. If they're foolish enough to be brawling, you should just put a shot straight in the driver's box. You're basically guaranteed to get the two crew you need for a kill. 
A small, sneaky, quick little bug of a tank. The rundown rating for the Tetrarch is an A. While not the best of the small, fast, low tier tanks, it's an excellent all-rounder and a real bastard when played right. Next up, we'll be moving on to the Soviet backups, the BT-5 and the T-26. 